today, the continuation of the sweet, sparkling, spiced cider. Today, we get spicy. This is like going to be the easiest thing you've ever seen us do. <laughs> so I'm, I'm almost drawing it out on purpose. No, I'm just kidding. So all I want to do is take the stopper out. Derek is going to hold on to it for me. I have here cinnamon sticks. Dig one out. Cinnamon stick. Then allspice berries. Why allspice berries? Why not allspice berries? Pick out some big ones. One, two, three, three. Cloves. Three. Because why not? He's feeling brave, apparently. Clove can be very overpowering. Put this back in. See you in a week. So it's been a couple of weeks, like probably three weeks. I know it was supposed to be one. But I thought, you know what, we like spicy, we like spices, so I left it. Okay, truthfully. I have a very big desk. We put it under the desk. We lost it. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> we just forgot about it for an extra week or two. No big deal. But what we're going to do today is we're going to rack this, and then we're going to naturally carbonate it. And um, to do that, the first thing we want to do is take a reading to make sure that it's really, really done. So I'm just going to remove the airlock and I'm going to very, very carefully move this. You want to be very careful when you move things like this because the leaves move around and bad things can happen. You don't want to stir it up if you're about to bottle it. So what am I not going to do at the end? I'm not going to pour it right back into the bottle. Okay, so we're going to take a reading on this. It was at 1.002 back on May 12th. Okay, so we're looking at almost seven weeks ago. And I know we added some spices, but we didn't take any readings or anything. So I just want to make sure that it's really, really done, even though if it's not done at 1.002. I'd like to point out how clear this is too, by the way. This worked beautifully, which it's just a basic cider. It shouldn't be anything too complicated. We are at for all intents and purposes, 1.002. Based on the way the meniscus is sitting, it could be like 1.000. Either way, I'm good with that. It's perfectly fine because we're going to actually re-ferment it anyway a little bit by bottle carving. That's a common misconception. A lot of people don't seem to realize that that's what bottle carving actually is, is it's a mini fermentation. So that's why you can't be past your alcohol tolerance or anything like that and still get natural carbonation. It just won't work. Your yeast have to be able to chew on something. Now, right now this went dry, which means there's no sugars in there whatsoever. But let's rack it out of here, get it off these spices and go from there. Okay. In order to start the racking process, what we want to do is get out Wibble, also known as the white bucket of levitation. Hello. And we're going to take our source and put it up on top of Wibble, just like that. And I'm going to take an auto siphon and a pitcher that has some liquid in there that I forgot about. That's why it was splashing around. And I'm going to have Derek hold that in there because we've all seen what happens when I'm left responsible for that. I'm only putting the siphon in about halfway because I really don't want to get close to that lease on the bottom. There's a lot of what looks like chalky gunk. That's the technical term for it. And we just let that siphon out. When I get down to the bottom, because I know a lot of that stuff got pushed to the side from the way this sat one time, it uh, shouldn't be too bad as far as getting stuff out. Back to the natural carbonation idea. We've had some questions lately where people were concerned because, well, I bottle carb something and there's sediment in the bottom of my bottle. How can I not have that? Well, the only way to natural carb or bottle condition, as people say it, is that way you're going to have a little bit of sediment in the bottom if that really bothers you well you can pressure a keg or whatever people do don't use a soda stream i've heard that that just makes a mess but um keg pressurization like force carved that seems to work we don't do it i just do it in the bottle it makes life easier 
I don't really have room to keep kegs around and we go through so many different brews that a keg of something is just too much. One thing I will say about this yeast is the lease is chunky and hard rather than like wispy. I'll, uh, I'll actually, when we get finished with this, show you a quick close-up of it so you can see what it looks like. It's a good example of the way you want lease to be when you're racking, as a matter of fact, because I'm not really seeing any bits and pieces coming up. I thought I was going to have a lot of waste from this. Doesn't look like it. All right, so looking in the bottom of this, it actually looks like a nice little uh, seaside scene. You got, you know, your log bench over on the side. You got little boulders. But really, what I want you to see is it looks like nothing really dissolved. Like you see, it's hard edges and chunks of that lease. That's a beautiful thing. And it's actually kind of unusual. We don't see that very often, but it was really nice because it meant that almost no lease got into my bottles, which is fantastic. All right. So we've covered a few things on this. It's supposed to be a sweet, sparkling, spiced cider. So far we have the cider. We have the spiced, which I get cinnamon, and clove. <laughs> she gets it from way over there. <laughs> so it, the spices are strong. Now, to counteract some of that with a dry cider, you want it to be sweet, which we talked about, and I'll get to in just a second, but we're also going to naturally carbonate this. Now, the one thing that we need to do to carbonate is we need to add a little bit more sugar. Since we're already adding sugar for the carbonation, I decided let's make it sweet at the same time, since there's really no other way to do it. So, how much do you add? Well, we know we like between 1.015 and 1.020 for sweetness. So I have here eight ounces of sugar. Now, can you use corn sugar? Of course you can. I'm just using plain white sugar because that's what I always use and it's always worked for me and it's okay. But what that's going to do, if we know carbonation in general, very general, gives about a half a percent. That means I'm gonna use between three and four points of my gravity to create that carbonation. Well, half a pound of sugar would be 0.023 gravity, right? Cause it's half of 0.046 and a pound per gallon. So 0.023 minus three or four points leaves me with a 1.019 to a 1.020 gravity. Very, very simple. It's just, it's just math. So what I'm going to do is take this half pound of sugar and dump it in here. I am also, considering something that Derricka might not be aware of. And that is the fact that when I dump all this into a non-degassed cider, it may actually foam over. May <laughs> We're gonna find out. the second coming of Mount Vesuvius. <laughs> yeah, I didn't degas this and I probably should have, but hey, look at that. It's been sitting long enough that it probably degassed naturally. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm stirring this a little bit, yeah, it's totally naturally degassed. And all I need to do is just mix this in Yes, I could pulverize it in my food processor and make the sugar smaller, all these sorts of crazy things, or I can just stir. <laughs> it takes like three minutes. Okay, so our sugar has been dissolved. Our bottles have been cleaned in. The red bucket of sanitization! <laughs> I'm so glad we brought that back. <laughs> anyway, and we are going to bottle. now. You've probably seen us bottle before. I'm gonna go through a quick series of it, but if you missed it, we did do a full video on just bottling and how to do it. And I'm gonna use the exact same techniques here. The only thing that we're gonna do different than from the bottling video is I am going to fill one that is plastic. And there's a reason for that. The way this works is we're gonna let this carbonate for a few days and then we're going to pasteurize this batch, okay? If you do not pasteurize, you can just throw it in the fridge and it'll be just fine, but that's the next section. So don't do that quite yet. But this bottle here is our tester. You give that a squeeze, and if it feels very firm, obviously you know you've carbonated enough and it's time to take the next step. For those curious, yes, these are Flinesburger bottles. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together.
What I mean by that is we got out that many bottles and there's only this little tiny bit left here that, uh, well, I'm going to drink it. <laughs> That's right. I'm drinking it right from the pitcher. <laughs> Oh, taste that. I would drink this right now. <laughs> this is so good. That is some of the best apple cider I've had in like a long time. And I mean, even the commercial stuff. And it's not even sparkling yet. Yeah, that is very tasty. I'm pleased. <laughs> it's just sweet enough without being... Like it's, I wouldn't call that super sweet no. at all. It's just sweet. The spices though, everything's just balanced. And we don't usually get that excited about young apple cider. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> that's a big, big deal. Anyway, so here, this needs to be washed now. <laughs> <laughs> and as you can see, we have a bunch of bottles. What do we got? Three, six, nine, ten bottles out of this. So uh, what do we do with these now? Like I said, this is gonna sit in a relatively warm-ish, like room temperature, okay? You don't wanna keep them in like a cold area. Room temperature, which for our house is anywhere from 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on where they're sitting. I am probably going to put these into some sort of a heavy duty plastic tub, but a cardboard box works too. Just in case one of them decides to overcarbonate and explode, we don't want that to happen. The idea behind this is they're going to carbonate for just a few days, okay? Just till they're carbonated enough. If these were left to carbonate fully, they would explode. Be very, very cautious when doing this method. You have to keep an eye on these. This is not the kind of thing you can go away for a week and come back. You will come back to a sticky mess with glass everywhere. I'm not trying to scare you, but this process right here is the riskier part. However, that's what this is for, okay? If I squeeze this now, it obviously flexes very easily. Over the next few days, I will check it once a day. When it just feels like, if it feels like you took a soda bottle and you shook it up, you know how firm that feels? If it feels like that, it's done. The minute it feels like that, it's done. Now, if you do this before you watch the rest of the video and you, you lose track of time, once it gets to that point, if you put them in your refrigerator, you can kind of hold time for a while, okay? You can actually drink them at that point too, if you really want to, but we are going to pasteurize and that'll be the next step. And you'll see that in the next video in this series. But as always guys, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.